Very briefly, Dennis and I are going to chat a little bit about the impact that technology has on the accounting profession. Um, a little bit from the perspective of what types of skills should we be looking at as future accountants um, and what types of things should we be thinking of while we're all getting very excited about artificial intelligence and the impact that it's going to have mm -hmm. in our lives. So Dennis, again, thank you very, very much for, for your time and for making time for us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Yvonne, to uh, talk to you today. Uh, just a little quick background uh, for me. Uh, I'm the Senior Vice President of ICMA and uh, in charge of the CMA program and not only developing and administering the exam, uh, creating the content specification outlines, understanding what the profession needs to focus on, but also uh, strategic planning for the organization and helping the certification grow. So just a quick summary of how I got into this profession. And I didn't take a straight line. Uh, it was actually an interesting journey. I started uh, in university studying uh, philosophy and oh, economics. Right. And, you know, after I graduated, I realized there's really not many jobs for philosophers <laughs> and economists. <Okay. laughs> Unless you have a PhD, which I did not want to do at the time. Okay. So, um, you know, I went on, I got my MBA and uh, worked as, as an accountant in an insurance company and then as a uh, controller slash CFO for a uh, uh, information technology consulting company. And it's very interesting because, you know, the education that I had in philosophy and economics actually in the long term has really benefited me. Okay. And we'll probably get into that a little later yeah, because the way the technology is changing, having those kind of analytical and critical thinking skills and mm. communication skills are very important. So happy to talk about that later. Yeah, the reason that I wanted to chat to Dennis is because um, of his involvement and his position in terms of looking at the curriculum itself, the competency requirements for the profession. So from, you know, from the perspective of someone who's sitting on the other side of the table, developing, if you will, developing the types of competencies that the students are going to be studying means that, you, you know, your role is to go, you know, where are we going and what do, um, in a way, what does society need from these professionals and what will they need from these professionals over the next couple of years? Because it's very seldom that we hear this type of thing from the people on the other side of the table. <laughs> yeah. By the time we get there, we're just reading the textbooks and go, oh, this is what I have to learn, you know, for mm -hmm. my exam. So this, this is why I think that, you know, this is such a, such a great discussion. You know, massive topic of discussion everywhere, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, we're all aware of the increased focus on, um, I think, what most people call digital competencies with, within professions. So when we talk about technology and the impact that technology has on the professions, most people refer to those as digital competencies. So for, for students that haven't heard that term, that's kind of, it all gets wrapped up in a way, oversimplification, but wrapped up in a way. So um, it's very easy to look and go, you know, artificial intelligence how is that going to impact accounting? You know, we're not going to need bookkeepers maybe, or, you know, computers are going to do uh, so much more of the calculation and the thinking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, you know, we focus a lot on that, but what do you believe, you know, based on the process that you've gone through, what do you believe are really important skills that accountants of the future, you know, students, young professionals are going to need to have um, to face, to face the future? Yeah, and as you said, the profession is changing and um, it's different, certainly much different now than when, when I started and it's going to be even more dramatically different in the future. And, you know, with the, the unfortunate pandemic that we're living through, actually the profession is going to change even more quickly. Yeah. Um, artificial intelligence is becoming more and more accepted and being implemented more in the accounting profession. So a lot of those routine jobs, like you, mm -hmm. you, know, you mentioned bookkeeping, some auditing uh, mm -hmm. jobs. I mean, you can get a, uh, a computer to audit 100% of the, yeah. the transaction. So you're not gonna need an army of auditors. You'll still need auditors, but not an army of auditors. Mm -hmm. And um, RPA, robotic process automation will 
will automate a lot of those repetitive tasks. So yes, the profession is definitely changing and we have to adjust. And the skills are actually, it's interesting. The skills I think come in two different categories. You have the technical skills. So learning more about data analytics, statistics, uh, even some computer programming mm. technology, right. very important. You have to understand the technologies. You don't yeah. have to be a, um, an IT whiz, but you have to understand artificial intelligence, mm. robotic process, automation, blockchain, for example. Mm. Um, the other category <laughs> is the softer skills, like uh, critical thinking, communication, strategic thinking. What, you need both of them um, because uh, the, the jobs in the future are going to be the jobs for those who have strategic thinking skills um, because a lot of the jobs, unfortunately, are going to be automated and you know, compliance type, type of work, uh, doing all those calculations that we learn in school with the big spreadsheets. That's yeah. all going to be automated. I mean, not all of it, but a lot of it, you know, so... Um, but what you need is professionals who have the ability to analyze that information, to, to be, uh, have some skepticism, be able to ask questions. Yeah. Why is that? That doesn't make sense. Or what does that mean for the future? And those are skills that um, are generally not developed in undergraduate accounting programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need the basic skills. You need the financial accounting, cost accounting need those skills to develop a, a groundwork, but you really need to, to develop those softer skills too. And I, and I brought up communication because I think the management accountant of the future uh, is going to be like the data uh, translator. Right. He or yeah. she will be the person yeah. in the middle between the data scientist mm. who, you know, after all, they're, they're brilliant, but very often they don't see the business uh, mm. Yeah. Through the whole value chain, right? Yeah. And so they, the management accountant can be the bridge between the data scientists because they know some of that, mm -hmm. not an expert, but they know, know enough to communicate with the data scientists and then interpret that and communicate the data uh, to the decision makers in the organizations right. yeah. to help yeah. them add value, right? Mm -hmm. So accountants of the future will not just be counting value, but they'll also be helping to add value, create competitive advantage. Yeah, I think um, one of the things I've, I've often said to my students is historically as accountants, we've, we've spent a lot of time and the focus was on being taught to create the information. You know, it was the, the accountant who was doing the calculations, adding the stuff up, creating the information. And predominantly your time is spent creating information. And then, you know, sort of there, whereas a, where we are now and where we're moving towards is that the information is being created, you know, automatically, if you will, like mm -hmm. most of the information, the calculations, et cetera, are created. And our job is to translate that, interpret that, translate right. it, and then make recommendations and you know help decision makers or be the decision makers, if if right. if you will. So that's a, you know for my students, it's like a, it's just an, it's an interesting when you're studying the stuff. Think about whether or not you're focusing on are you creating information or are you learning how to interpret that information, translate it, and what it means, what it would mean for for an organization. And I think the communication skills historically have been very overlooked um, for, mm -hmm. for accountants because when you're busy creating information, you're a bit of an internal process. Whereas if, if you're sitting in a board of directors, you're not assuming that everybody around the table has financial skills or financial understanding, which means you have to interpret that. You have to explain that. You have to translate that in a way that a marketing director may understand, would understand, you know, or, or whatever the case is. Um, the last time we spoke, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, which I thought was, was, was really good to bring up, you mentioned, um, you know, some of, the, some of the big four are not hiring accountants anymore. And I think that's such an interesting thing. Um, so how, how, how would the big four accounting and auditing firms sort of be justifying not hiring accountants and auditors? Yeah, well, just to, to clarify, uh, they are hiring accountants, but not as many as yeah, they, they, 
Yeah. I mean, uh, here in the U.S., you know, the big four would go to college campuses, uh, even when students were in their junior year, a year before they graduate, and start signing up tons of young yeah. students to become auditors as soon as they graduated. But they don't need as many auditors anymore, um, you know, because of what we've discussed. So they're looking for students who have more analytical skills. They're, and they want to also uh, hire for their consulting work, mm. right? And because uh, that's where the growth is for them. That's where their future revenue growth is, is consulting. And mm -hmm. so they're looking to economics majors, IT majors, finance majors, accountants as well. But if you can show that you, um, not only do you have solid accounting skills, but you also have those analytical skills, yeah. uh, you know, that really places you well for getting a job with one of the big four. Yeah, uh, consulting I companies. think that's yeah. really interesting. It's really, that's really interesting to, to consider your, your finance skills as, as, a, as a base, but not the be all and end all of, um, you know, of, of your qualification or, or of, of your career. Um, so in terms of some of the, the, the competencies that you've, you know, that you've worked into, into your profession, what are some of the competencies that are quite new and unseen that a student of say five, 10 years ago would be really surprised or maybe even horrified at, see <laughs> <laughs> at seeing? Well, um, you know, it, it really is in the, in the uh, realm of uh, technology and uh, analytics. You know, we've always taught business statistics in accounting programs, mm. but now it's sort of like uh, business statistics on steroids. You know, it it's, can be intense. Uh, you know, it's not just regression. There are other predictive analytics, prescriptive mm. analytics type skills. So it's important to learn them. Uh, those skills and be also very uh, up to date on the technology. Uh, however, you don't have to be a data scientist. Mm. You know, I mean, if you happen to really enjoy that, that's great to right. be able to do both. Um, learn some coding. Yeah, Absolutely. very valuable. I, mean, I encourage everyone to learn some coding. I mean, you don't have to be a computer programmer, but I think it's helpful. Mm. Um, the other skills that I think accountants should develop uh, and be quite adept at and this is new, is data visualization skills. So yeah. learning Tableau, for example, how to data, mine the data, mm. you know, get the relevant data, and then how to picture that, you know, not just a bar chart or, you know, a pie chart, but be creative. I mean, mm. some people use the term storytelling. And, you know, I think that's, that's where the communication skills come in. Yeah. Because... You know, you're you're dealing with. If you're not the one making the decisions, then you're communicating mm. to senior decision makers. Mm. They don't want to see all the, the data. I mean, they're trusting that you know what you're doing. They want to see, uh, in a couple of pictures and explanation, what the data means for them, and and how they can make a decision that will help the company grow. So, do you feel that? Um, students and, and even, you know, those who have kind of are in the threshold of just, just qualifying, do you think that there's enough, currently enough understanding of the importance of these skills? Or do you think that predominantly students are still following a bit more of an accounting technicist approach that may catch up with, catch up with them fairly soon? Yeah, my, my feeling is that the majority are, are still I, don't, I hate to use the word stuck, but that's what it feels like in the old mentality of learning the compliance skills. Mm -hmm. And academia, you know, they're they're a little slow to change because, um, mm -hmm. you know, they have a lot of decision points and bureaucracy built into their systems. They are changing. Yeah. Um, universities are starting to teach more technology, data analytics, coding, mm -hmm. but it's slow. It is. And, the accountants, the young, the students, I think, are, some of them are, I mean, you know, I don't, I hate to generalize, but yeah. I think they need to be more proactive in adapting the changes in the profession. Yeah. Learning these new technical skills, but also, and this is probably the hardest part for accountants. I mean, let's face it, 
a lot of us in the profession, the last thing we think about is um, writing or public speaking. Yeah. And if you want to get ahead in the profession, any profession, those are very, very important skills. And, you know, you may not have enjoyed your English uh, courses in university, but believe me, they're going to be very important uh, because you want to be able to communicate clearly, mm. succinctly, get mm. to the point, and, and that has to be grammatically correct and well-organized uh, in your writing and also in your speaking. So those are important skills and sometimes the most difficult to, to develop. Mm. Uh, I, I think, sorry, I think it's it's a conversation I have um, with, with my students so often because it's so natural, especially where we are at the moment, it's so natural that most of the accounting students are in that stream because they were good with numbers mm -hmm. at school, you know, so it's, it's like we, we herded <laughs> all the people who were good with numbers into the accounting stream. Um, and it's not to say that you're only either good at one or the other, but generally, you know, the you start your study and you focus on the strengths. Um, so students didn't get into accounting because they enjoyed communication. They, they got into it because you develop a passion for, for, for numbers or you're, you're good with numbers. Um, and I'm finding at the moment there is that switch over where communication is now... Um, you know, far more important and examinable, and it comes as a bit of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Why do I and how? Yeah, and I think universities are changing. I mean, I see schools now where, you know, they break up in teams. So, you know, teamwork, mm -hmm. of course, is important, and you uh, have to create a report, a written report, and then make a presentation. Um, you know, when I went to university, it was pretty much you sat in your class, you listened to the professor, you did your homework. Yeah. And, you know, you, you did well on the test, which is basically calculation, you would get an A. Mm. Uh, so it's different today. And I think I think that's a good, it's a good sign. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, the, I think we're, we're sitting in an interesting point where, um, and you mentioned earlier, you know, some, some students and some, some students are, are aware. But I think to a large extent, if, if you're kind of quietly studying you know your your, your syllabus and, and concentrating um it's very difficult to know what the future holds or what's going on in the rest of the industry it's not like people send you an announcement <laughs> mm -hmm. you know it's not as though the world sort of sends you a by the way this is what's waiting for you in five or ten years time which is exactly why um i, I want to have these conversations because um i feel that it's not that students don't want to you know to do this stuff, but if you're not aware of it, then, you know, if nobody, if nobody's sort of making you aware of it, then, you know, where are you supposed to get this from? And I think at the moment we're sitting in an interesting transition phase where the, the schools and the universities and the education is catching up. But as you say, for a whole bunch of completely understandable reasons, it is tough, it is slow. And I think a lot of my students are sort of stuck in the middle where they're starting to feel the assessments are shifting. Um, but their schooling and their education hasn't quite prepared them for that. Mm -hmm. And chances are in five, six, 10 years time, this is not going to be the same problem. You know, they, everything will move back and they'll be prepared. Um, so for someone sitting in the space now that's going, well, my university is just teaching me calculations or, you know, whatever the massive oversimplification, what types of things can, would you suggest that a student or young professional explores, looks into, does in order to help bridge that gap if that's not something that's in the curriculum that they're currently studying? Sure. And before I ask that, I just want to uh, answer that question. I just wanted to say that, you know, the accounting profession has always changed, you know. However, the, the real key difference today is the pace of change is sure. just accelerating. Yeah. And it's different. It's a challenge for young people. Um, because what they learn in school, some of it, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, all education is good, yeah. Yeah. but some of it, maybe a fair amount, you're not going to use on the job. Yeah. So in terms of uh, broadening your education, you know, I suggest, uh, you know, there are things like getting involved in a club, you know, it could be in the accounting club, for example, uh, a good thing like for that is 
it's a volunteer. So you're really among friends, you're not getting graded and you can take different roles in the club, you can learn leadership skills. You know, someone has to be the president of the club, right? Someone has to be the treasurer or the secretary. Uh, you have meetings, so you have to be able to run a meeting. You have to be able to present uh, to the group. Maybe the treasurer is presenting the financial summary for the group. I mean, we're not talk talking big money, of course, but yeah, yeah. you know, you all have yeah. you have a budget. You have to, yeah. and I, I think that's a that's a good way to to develop some of the softer skills, and also take some courses outside of business. You know, I know there are some. Uh, basic courses you have to take in the liberal arts, but explore a little more, Be, take some courses that tap into your creativity because being uh, creative, I mean, we don't, we don't like to have creative accountants, but um, being creative is, is, a, is a good skill to have. Yeah. Certainly when, you're, when you need to communicate mm -hmm. and, and, and to write, um, you know, and, and also to strategize for the future. You know, strategic planning is so, so important today. And, you know, it used to be very regimented and you looked out three to five years, but today you have to do it continuously because the, the world is changing so quickly. Sorry. And companies are going out of business at a much faster rate than they ever were yeah. because they're being uh, disrupted by new technologies. So you have, mm -hmm. to, you have to have the creativity and to have those innovation skills and be able to look into the future and those are some ways to develop those skills, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the creativity has always been frowned upon <laughs> for, for, for accounting. And I think that's, it's understandable where, you know, where the source came from, you know, where, but, but where we're going, and I, I prefer to think of it, as you said, as innovation. Um, it's an incredibly important skill for, you know, the, the financial professional of the future to be able to innovate. Um, uh, if you are working for an organization, you are going to be um, heavily responsible, as you say, for the strategic success of the company, because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, uh, let's be honest, you know, we, we can say what we like about you know, strategy and goals, companies are in business to make money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you're sitting in that position where you're holding the money or you're accountable for the money, or you're, you know, you're making the money, you're counting it, you're recording it, you're reporting on it, you're whatever, you're sitting in a very important seat. Um, and, you know, you can't, you can't, you shouldn't, just, you know, if you're in a corporate environment, if you're in a business, you're not going to separate that from what the business does. <laughs> you, know, you can't say I'm in my office counting the pennies. Um, mm -hmm. And what, you know, what my business actually does is, is irrelevant. So I think it's, um, it's, it's really exciting, but it's really important to develop uh, skills, to develop creativity and innovation, because more and more we're seeing ideas you know, and, and stuff come together that we've never, you know, we've never seen before, we never thought of, we never knew existed. Um, and as you say, it's disrupting, dis disrupting everything we know. So I'm very keen to get rid of the idea that creative accountants are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very like, just, just the same, like, I'm very keen to get rid of the idea of like gray accountants. Like I'm very keen to get, <laughs> you know, for, for a student that's kind of going, I got into accounting because of the numbers. Um, and this just seems to be changing so much that I, I don't seem to be suited. Do you do you feel that it's a person like a personality shift, or do you feel that someone who kind of got into this this realm or this you know this the accounting field while they were you know sort of technically good with numbers and, and let's be honest, we we're probably mostly introverts. Um, do you feel that this is a shift that we can comfortably make? Well. I mean, numbers are great and we'll always have numbers. So if you're good at numbers, I mean, that's, that's a tremendous benefit. Uh, you know, may not be involved in counting up the numbers so much in the future, but you know, you have to know how to do that in order to analyze the financial statements and the reports to have some professional skepticism. Mm. And so being good at numbers is definitely a benefit because that will help you with the analytical skills. Mm. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in that, even though in the future, let's say, 
you know, the financial statements, you press a button and they're done automatically, right? That's that's not good enough. I mean, you have to to really understand those financial statements and, and to be able to ask the questions about them to say, mm. wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Or why are we, why is this trend happening? Mm. Uh, you have to learn the basics of putting together a set of financial statements and that will help you really understand it. So being good at numbers is always gonna be a great benefit. You are going to have to adapt and we all have to adapt in our careers. You'll have to learn other skills and you know, be patient with yourself. It it takes time. You know, you have a long career ahead of you. You know, if you're in your 20s, you could be working another 40, 50 years yeah. and you'll change. You know, you'll, the, the big thing is to try to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, take little steps, but yeah. getting out of your comfort zone. You know, if, if you're afraid of public speaking, for example, you can join. There's a lot of different clubs for public speaking, yeah. you know, where you can, be in a safe environment and try, you know, a small group and then try your public speaking and get feedback on how you can grow. Yeah. And there, there are ways to, to, to grow in your career, uh, but the key is to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You're right. A lot of us are introverts. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's not, you know, we all say, oh, we got to do networking and all that. You know, me personally, I consider myself an introvert and networking is like, no, oh, it's not what I want to do. But as <laughs> I've grown up in my career and I've got more comfortable with it, I found that, yeah, yeah, okay. I enjoy these personal interactions, yeah. but it takes time. Be it patient does. with yourself. I think, I think if we can almost underline everything we've discussed, probably that, that, that theme is, is, as you say, you, you need to, get out of your comfort zone or, you know, get, mm -hmm. get, get comfortable with getting out of your comfort zone. Because the reality is, you know, you and I are kind of talking about how the accountant of the future is going to change, but, but you and I actually don't know, <laughs> you know, we, we, we have no idea what's coming in the next five years, you know, in, in January, none of us could see this, you know, the, the pandemic and the impact yeah. that it's had. Yeah. And, and we still don't really know, you know, exactly what the, all the far reaching effects of this thing is going to be yeah. um, and how it's going to impact, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, the only thing, the only, the only consistent thing is that stuff is going to change and we, we don't really know, we're not going to get a memo <laughs> of what that's going to look like. And we're not going to know. And the people that are, prepared for success are not going to be the people who did a course in that thing necessarily, you know, um, the people that are prepared for it are the people that are prepared to step out their comfort zone and go, well, this is, this is crap. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this is not what I studied for, you know, <laughs> but let's go, let's do it. Let's... Yeah. Well, the great thing about getting a good education, uh, a broad education is that it teaches you how to learn and, uh -huh. Because yeah. right? you're right. We don't know what we're going to have to learn. Uh, mm -mm. You know, when when accountants were starting to, to work in the 70s and 80s, spreadsheets, you know, electronic spreadsheets, I mean, nobody knew that. I mean, you know, how would you know? But the fact that you had a good education and you learned how to learn, mm. figured out how to, how to learn how to do spreadsheets. And now it's yeah. like, you know, second nature. Yeah. So I think I think that's the key. You always have to be open to learning, continuous to learning. And in terms of what the future brings, um, a lot of these, like the big four, if you go on their websites, they have an insights and trends uh, section. Uh -huh. yeah. where you can read reports on you know trends for the future. Uh, yeah. And a lot of accounting associations, including IMA, go on the website to see in the research section. Um, reports on trends for the future. And it's important to, you know, you don't have to immerse yourself in it, but to read some of that, to kind of get an idea where the profession is going in the future. Yeah. And, and for, the, for the credentials, I know for our credential, the CMA, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure just about all of them do, we do what we call a job analysis uh, research survey. Uh, other people call it a practice analysis. So we survey, accountants, management accountants all over the world to ask them what did they do on the job and what 
knowledge okay. and skills right. they need to do their job effectively. Right. And also, where do they think the profession is going? So that helps us to make yeah. sure that our uh, credential is up to date. Right. Yeah, you're, it's not like you're developing this in your little office in the back corner without, you know. Yeah, with a group of uh, 20 people who profess to be experts. No, yeah. we have to rely on what the profession is telling us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, the, what's happening on the ground, what people are actually, you know, what, what's actually being experienced. Um, I think that that's such, that's such valuable information. I think there's, there's, there's some very valuable takeaways. I think um, one discomfort is the order of the day. <laughs> yeah. um, you will get used to it. And it doesn't mean the first time you touch anything, you have to be perfect at it. So, right. you know, slow down. That's, calm actually, down. that's a very important statement you just made is sometimes I think uh, we tend to think that we have to be perfect. Yeah. You know, we're afraid that someone's going to say, well, he didn't or she didn't do yeah. a really good job. Yeah. That's okay. You know, yeah. it, failure being less than perfect is, is, is how we learn and how we grow. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is the only way. There's so much of the stuff that we're facing that we've never faced before there was no exam, there was no preparation, there was no test, there was no textbook, and yet here we are, <laughs> making, <laughs> making, making the best of the situation and making decisions for, um, you know, for, for, for the future. But yeah, I think um, comfort zone, key takeaway from, from this discussion, and take, take initiative for your own, for your own mm -hmm. development, because it's, it's not to say that your university or education provider necessarily is going to provide you with what you're going to need for your job in the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's also not to say that you, you know, you may kind of go, oh, I'm studying this stuff and it's kind of interesting, kind of not so interesting, but it may just, you know, your, your enthusiasm or your excitement or your passion may not have been sparked yet because you haven't found your thing, you know, and the, don't wait for your university or education provider to put a textbook in front of you because whatever sparks your interest might not actually be in there. It might be coding or yeah. programming. Or, you know. <laughs> You know, another suggestion I have is to learn about other cultures uh, because, okay. you know, uh, businesses are, they're global now, and, mm. you know, and having a, uh, an understanding of other cultures. I mean, if you can travel great, but not everybody has the means to do that, but you can learn a lot by reading, by watching movies and videos about, you know, what it's like uh, in China, what it's like in mm. Africa, uh, Europe. U.S. wherever you happen to be, is it having that cultural sensitivity mm. uh, it is important as because all businesses today are global. Mm. And I think the 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 it's interesting you mentioned that one of the things I've, I've often said like it doesn't I don't care what business you're doing business with you're doing business with people. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter at what level or what organization or what size of organization you're dealing with whenever you're doing business, there's, it's, it's a person, you know, you're dealing yeah. with people. So you're, and that's, people that's actually one of the challenges of the pandemic is, you know, we can't meet people person face to face, you know, yeah. it's been a tough year, you know, thank God we have uh, uh, zoom and yeah. different technologies like this. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, there's nothing like sitting down with someone and talking to them in person and going out to lunch with them. And... Yeah. Um, Dennis, thank you so much for, for, for your time. And, and um, one of the next chats that, uh, that I'd, I'd like to have with you is to find out more about um, the profession itself. Um, I, I look forward to, to more discussions with you about the IMA, specifically about, um, about some of these types of competencies. Okay. Yeah, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And until we speak again, yeah. you know, yeah, um, and in the meantime, you know, if everybody, anybody's interested, you could check out our website, imanet.org, uh, tells you all about the CMA program, which is a global certification. So I uh, yeah. look and forward to talking to you again. Yeah, we'll definitely be chatting more about, uh, more about the profession itself in our next conversation. We'll, we'll have a chat about the profession. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Take care, everyone.